Welcome to Robots Are Not Boring. How to optimize your line follower. Now we all need to follow lines. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to optimize a line follower. This is a very simple robot to try. The heavy components are mounted as low as possible so it can drive around quickly. Looking at the underside, we can see two pairs of light sensors. In this video I will only be using one sensor. The other three are there to look into other topics in other videos. This program uses two my blocks. An initialization block which sets up some starting conditions, and the line follow block to drive the robot. The line follow block has three parameters. MP or motor power which sets the speed. Distance which sets the number of centimeters to travel and side, which defines which side of the black line to follow. Here we convert centimeters into degrees, and then stay in the repeat until loop till the number of degrees is reached. This is the important part of the line follower. To start with we need to form the error signal, which is the difference between the reflected light and the set point of 60. 60 is the sensor reflected light value halfway between the value on black and the value on white. We now take the error signal and multiply it by the variable kp to form the PID control signal. Here we have only implemented the proportional part of PID. This is good enough to follow a straight line. The PID signal modifies the motor speed so that the robot moves in the direction to reduce the error signal. The value of kp decides how well the robot follows the line. A high value will cause instability. A low value will give a slow response. Here we have added the error variable to the line graph. This will enable us to try different values of kp and choose the best value for our robot. Let's try a value of 1 for kp and see what happens. We have an oscillation as kp is too large. This looks interesting, but it's not what we want. Let's try 0.1. This seems to follow well, but let's see how he responds to a disturbance. To make a disturbance, we can stick some tape on the line. Here we see the disturbance, followed by a slow response. How are we going to decide the best value for kp? The Ziegler-Nichols method is a well-known procedure for optimizing closed-loop control. First you have to find the value of kp, which gives a sine wave oscillation with constant amplitude. Then you use half of this kp value. Let's try 0.8 for kp. This gives a slightly increasing amplitude after the disturbance. Let's try a value of 0.7. This gives more or less a constant amplitude after the disturbance, so we will take half of this for our kp value. With kp set to 0.35, we have a good recovery from the disturbance. If your robot has to pick up objects or move things around, you might find that the optimal value for KP changes. To deal with this situation, you could define KP as one of the parameters in your line follower my word and set the parameter each time you use it. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe, and remember, robots are not boring.